E-scooter sales are steadily on the rise, pointing to a growing customer preference. However, a recent spate of battery-related fires have called into question the safety of the technology. Now, Aether Energy has been one of the earliest entrants in the e-scooter startup space and also one of the most successful. Joining me today is Tarun Mehta, the CEO and co-founder of Aether Energy, to dispel fact from fiction. Tarun, welcome to Money Control. Thank you. It's been a good year, financial year 2022. 354% uh, year-on-year growth, according to the statistics. Yeah. 4x, 5x, 6x, sorry, large growth, yes. Large growth. Yeah. Uh, has, has it surpassed your expectations or was this sort of planned for? I think the last quarter uh, was a tough one uh, with the semiconductor crisis. So we lost a fair bit of sales. Um, but apart from that, I think the year has been fantastic. Uh, we've grown a lot. I'm very proud of how teams have been able to scale up scale up supply chain, distribution, everything, uh, how the product's gotten better. So overall, I would say pretty great year, yeah. Uh, last one quarter notwithstanding. Do you expect to exceed that this year? I think we just, I think we, we literally just got started. Um, we are seeing, in the month of March, we saw more orders than we saw in all of 2018 and probably 19 put together, right, in just one month. Um, we only have about 35 cities right now. Uh, we will have about 120 to 140 experience centers by the end of FI23. So we're going to grow a lot in terms of distribution. We're going to have uh, a lot more presence across the country. Um, I think in, in this year, we should grow several times. Uh, the market's fantastic. Customer, cu customer expectations are sky high, and I think they love the product. I think this is going to be a great year. What's the delivery to order ratio? Because obviously there's a supply chain issue and you've mentioned that you plan to overhaul the supply chain extensively this year. So we're putting a lot of work on the supply chain. Uh, for both Swapna and I, I think most of our focus uh, in the last few months has been only on manufacturing or supply chain because it's obvious to us that with this kind of scale up happening, that's the number one thing that needs to sort of be worked on. The order to supply ratio is uh, frankly embarrassing right now. Uh, month of March, it was at 30%. So it's not our uh, finest moment, um, but we're making a lot of changes under the hood and we're pretty confident in less than a couple of months, uh, the number will start looking considerably better. Overall, however, I do expect that we'll be supply constrained for at least the next two years. Now, coming to the issue of battery safety, obviously it's a burning issue, so to speak. What would your advice be to young startups in terms of how to essentially make it more India specific, uh, their testing procedure? I think respect for, respect for engineering and testing um, should be there. Um, while you all want to launch faster, we all want to scale up faster, uh, hardware takes some time and you want to put in that effort. So what's kind of missing right now for a lot of us is that there are not enough testing standards, internal testing standards that you can cycle through to ensure yourselves that you've, you've, you've got a really, really high quality battery pack at the end of it. High quality battery pack, high quality electronics, all, all, all EV components. Um, it's a tough journey because those standards don't exist and we have to come up with ourselves. Uh, I'm not talking about regulatory standards. That's a small layer, right? Because they are like the minimum requirements. I'm talking about internal testing standards. Um, for example, at Aether, we go through about 120 tests at a pack level, about 800 tests at a vehicle level. And most of these tests happen several times before every single product launch, right? Um, I don't think we're unique. I think most global EV brands go through something similar. I think in India, this is still a little rare. So we learned it the hard way in our early years design and the first few good vehicles is probably 30% of the journey. Yeah. The ne next 70% is just a lot of very boring, but very, very essential testing, testing, testing. Before we launched the first vehicle, I think we had built 200 battery packs and we had cycled them for about four years. Thousands of issues we would have fixed before we got around to just putting the first vehicles out. And since then we've just kept improving. Uh, and I think we're still at an early stage in terms of product development. Uh, it takes time. You want to build something from scratch in India, 
Uh, you want to develop your own standards. You can't even just copy paste, you know, what somebody in Taiwan or Korea or Japan is doing, because those road conditions are very different. Those thermal, con those, those environments are very different. Heat is different. Uh, humidity is different. Vibration levels are different. So you want to come up with something very unique for Indian customers. Mm -hmm. To me, more than the vehicle itself, what Aether has built over the last few years, the real IP and the real value is in this product development understanding. Yeah. I think this is this is very critical, and every brand should be focusing on building this. Now, ever since these fires have emerged, a lot of experts, a lot of people in the battery development space have chimed in and you know given their views on the matter. Now, because Aetha Energy has sort of built a reputation over time and had a very long developmental period, uh, I want to ask you what are the misconceptions and what's the truth in a lot of these statements. One of them is that almost all these batteries which are imported mm. are inherently designed to withstand temperatures up to 130 degrees Celsius. Mm. So ambient temperatures and Indian summers should not be affecting them or they're not the primary cause that uh, these fires are taking place. Uh, is there truth to that notion? Battery chemistry plays, in my opinion, nearly no role in the cause of a fire. Fires don't happen because your chemistry has a problem. Um, if your chemistry is not good, Maybe what will happen is your systems will shut down faster, right. right? Now, the problem is, however, more complicated than that. If temperatures are higher, you will have more cutoffs, right? And that's where, when your cutoffs are happening, if your quality, if your manufacturing quality is not very good, then some of those cutoffs may not be understood very well by the system. And those are the situations which can lead to a failure, which can lead to a fire, right? In my opinion, most fires are ultimately uh, it's it's the quality that's responsible for all fires. Um, chemistry, good chemistry, bad chemistry will lead to good or bad performance, right? But it has a very limited role in cells in batteries catching fire uh, because it's often not the cell that that's 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 at fault. It's the battery pack that is at fault. So you want to put in a lot of effort on the pack design, on the battery management system, uh, and the assembly and the build quality of all of this. Um, there's also this notion now that the packaging of the battery um, should be conducive to a safer you know, battery pack yeah. and that safety can often come at the cost of performance, additional safety. Uh, is there a trade-off with a, with a safer battery? No, 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 no. I don't think safer battery packs come at the cost of performance. Uh, I think a safer design comes at the cost of a longer design process. I think it comes at the cost of some some actual cost because you will have more layers of safety built into the design, more fuses, uh, more vents, uh, more tracking mechanisms uh, in your BMS, all of that stuff. But the cost is not sky high. I think the cost is very, very manageable. And your performance is not at all impacted by this, at all. Performance is, has no correlation to safety. So at the moment, would you say that as a customer, they only have the precedence set by a certain brand for reliability and safety to depend on when they're making a purchasing decision? Or is there something that they can personally research or look out for uh, when they're making the decision to buy something? I think it's a, it's a good idea to try and understand how much effort the, 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 the company has put in into pack design, um, how much open they are, about talking about what they've built. Um, understanding whether, I think key question is whether packs are built in-house or not. Yeah. Often not con having control on your own packs is, uh, is, a, is a matter of concern. It's not a showstopper, you can have a great supplier, but building packs ourselves generally is a better control. And um, even if it's a supplier, maybe try and question, are those suppliers, at least the pack suppliers, is that happening in India or not, right? Because if your entire packs are coming out of a different country, I think then you will have a serious challenge they will often not be built for the Indian situation. Now, Aether is closing in on a decade now, in 2023. Uh, what would you say is the way forward for the segment at large? I think eight years of building this company, the last one year has probably been as exciting as the previous seven put together. We are at, uh, and I won't even say we are at the cusp of change. I think the change is here. I think the last few months has been just terrific. We've gone from roughly about three, four percent penetration in the scooter segment just six months back to 12% penetration. In six months, you've gone from 3% to 12%. I 
I think what's ahead of us is, is almost 25-30% penetration in the next 12 to 18 months. These are times of enormous change. If every third or fourth customer in the country, every third or fourth scooter customer in the country is going to be buying electric, right. literally in the next year or two, I think then the then then people's expectations, people's familiarity with electric is going to change a lot. I think our supply chains are going to look very different. I think the overall talent is going to look very different. I think the scale of electric is going to become mainstream. Uh, until just last year, electric felt like a top 10 city, 15 city situation, right. you know, something only early adopters were going to be buying. Now you've got even rural customers very excited about the idea of electric. Um, obviously, I'm very bullish. I'm an EV entrepreneur. So I'm obviously very bullish about the, about the future of EV. But I think the pace of change is, is going to be the, 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 the key story here. I think India is going to leapfrog every EV transformation globally. We're going to go from like near 0% EV penetration to like 30, 40% penetration, literally in a matter of few years. Small countries like Norway have been able to do that. No large country that I know of has been able to achieve that kind of a transformation. India is very likely going to be pulling that off. In the automotive industry in India, I think this, ha this is going to be the largest change that's ever happened. And it's happening literally now. We're in the middle of it. We're six months into it. And obviously, some amount of teething issues are expected and we're kind of seeing them. But uh, when it comes to these battery incidents, do you think it can cause a fairly significant hiccup in, in the EV sector? Or is it, in a way, you know, it kind of separates the wheat from the chaff? I don't think this dampens the mood. I think uh, this makes customers more aware about quality. I think customers kind of probably already knew that not, not every vehicle is built the same. Yeah. I think they are now going to be more vocal in asking those questions. But the fact that fundamentally electric is more attractive for them, from, for, for electric is more attractive on a cost basis, on, a, on an experience basis, the acceleration is better, the handling is better, the noise is better, and obviously the running cost is like eight to 10 times lower. That's not changing. And I think uh, it's not just one ether. I think there are lots of good brands now that are building good quality electric vehicles, yeah. right? So I don't think customers are going to freak out and say, wow, buy nothing. Let's just sit tight, right? Um, I think the interest in EV is not going to slow down at all. It's only going to accelerate. Just that I think there are going to be more, more considered purchases mm -hmm. in the future. From a public safety POV, do you think some form of government certification for uh, s safety standards and all right. is necessary to be put in at the earliest? See, the uh, ARI uh, certification bodies already have uh, a battery testing protocol. Mm -hmm. um, what I would suggest is, given that this is a, 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 an exciting time of growth and lots of things are changing, maybe this is an opportunity for the government to co-opt some of us OEMs who've been building battery packs for the last six, seven years. Uh, we have a lot of data, hundreds of millions of kilometers. We have understood a lot. And not just us, I think there are many OEMs like us. I think there's an opportunity for the government to co-opt most of us and, and make the certification process more robust. I'm not saying the certification process is not robust, but maybe it could be make, made more specific to the Indian road conditions, the Indian environmental conditions, right? Um, but I also want to be careful. I don't, I'm not, I don't think the, it is the government's job to ensure good manufacturing quality. The government is not the quality department of automotive companies, right? right? That is the automotive, that is an OEM's job, yeah. right? So it's best left to the OEMs, right? The government should have good qualifying standards, but then the market will, will separate good quality from, from not so good quality. Now, we've had a discussion on battery swapping and you've shared your thoughts on it. There's a lot of wear and tear, performance tends to take a hit. Given that what the budget recently announced and pointed towards policies that are more conducive for battery swapping. Uh, do you sh still hold on to your stance or is it a different segment because in the premium end, uh, which is where Aether operates, right. you know, having a supercharger network of sorts is, is probably a better idea. For us as a company, swapping uh, has played a limited role which is why Aether is not into swappable battery packs today. But I do think that in, for a few segments, especially the commercial segments, swapping plays a very critical role uh, in the two-wheeler market today. Uh, it goes without saying. Delivery applications, lots of commercial applications, swapping is the only way to drive 100, 150 kilometers a day without having a lot of downtime. Um, it does help with upfront cost also. But for a consumer market, um, in almost all cities in India, I think Charging is a more cost-efficient way, 
and a more simpler way to drive electrification. Now, the, like a market like Mumbai, where you have no parking space, that's a different problem. Yeah. Uh, and I think we may see some hybrid solutions emerge. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I'm more bullish on fast charging. Is there any truth to the notion that it mitigates uh, the safety issue a little bit because a lot of the time the battery spends charging is outside of the scooter or is it the same or can it possibly increase it? I don't think it has any bearing. See, ultimately a scooter will always have a battery pack. You will not have a situation where the scooter is sitting without a battery pack. Right. right? No situation. Think of it. You go to a swapping station, you will put another battery in. Right? right yeah. So you'll always have a battery no, but pack. But when it's being charged, I only I think if your battery people packs, who are in this space I think, I, think, this. I think if your batteries are catching fire while on charge, as a battery manufacturer and a vehicle manufacturer, you have far bigger problems. Okay. Because even mobile phones are no longer catching fire when they're on charge. As the market matures, for Aether, what would be the focus? Would it be performance or range? I think as a brand, uh, we've tried to take a different stab at it. Um, it's not performance, it's not range. I think the bigger true north for us is experience. We think in the tourless space, especially in the scooter space, there's not enough attention on the overall customer experience, on the overall product experience. I think we have too many products being just assembled together. I think building a product from the grounds up, like an Apple, right? I think is a fantastic opportunity. And to be able to do that in scooter and in an Indian condition, meeting Indian cost targets, I think it's a terrific target. And if you can build that, I think it's an amazing company and brand that you can build. Right. So our focus is going to be on the product. We want to make sure, because that's where the margins lie. That's where the value lies. That's where, and that's the missing space in the market. Right. Like, if I, gun to your head, what's the last scooter that you think that was an amazing product? To me, it was a Honda Activa, and it was 20 years back. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think we have had good scooters, right? But have you had ground-breaking new experiences? I think Activa was the last one. We just changed people's experiences around automatic transmission, right? Like amazing CVD, right? It, and it made more people buy scooters. I think there's an opportunity to do something similar with electric happening. That's what Aether wants to solve. I think we can do a lot more with what electric offers. I think the convenience angle, I think the comfort angle, I think the right quality angle, I think we can do lots of different things using connectivity, using solid batteries, using and integrating it all very really well, right? Aether as a company believes very strongly in vertical integration, yeah. not just because it gives better cost structures, but also because we believe tightly integrating components gives us a better customer and better product experience. And that's the, that's the empty space that as a business we are targeting. All right, Tarun Mehta, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, nice talking to you, Bhatt.